Mm -mm. A little bit, just a little bit. That's good. It's the same thing. Alrighty. Hey, Plenty friends. Welcome back to another new Plenty video. Today, I'm gonna go ahead and propagate some of my favorite vining plants. I will show you the mother plants and tell you why I love them. Stop exposing me. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm getting old, y'all. Time is getting to me as it is to everyone else, but it's too soon. It's a stress, I'm telling you. Got my little coffee, I made a double shot espresso. I hope the quality's not that bad and the, micro the audio is not bad as well. We are in different settings, it's been a hot minute since I filmed. Oof, I think it's been like a month since I filmed in the planty room. So we're back in here, there's a lot of plants. I ended up adding a few because a little bit, some were like bald, <laughs> like there was not a lot of plants in there. So. I got some from the living room, as you can see, to add more greenery and the setting because I feel like there needs to be some plants. We love the jungle look, so yeah, I'm gonna drink my coffee before the dirt starts getting everywhere. I'm not really repotting, but I do have four inch planter, just a pitting, just a basic planter. This is maybe like 3.5, what is this? I'm reusing these succulent ones that I got from Home Depot because we ended up repotting some plants. Today's 11 ounces, I'm not quite sure. I think it's like a 3.5. I'm pretty sure this is a four inch, you can kind of see the difference, but I'm basically going to put some, I don't know quite yet, but I do want to propagate two different plants that are going to go straight into soil and then the other ones are going to go straight into sphagnum moss. I have my little cakes, I like to call them cakes because it's just cute and it's fun, but it's just these little foil trays that you get from like the stores and I put some sphagnum moss inside as a medium to propagate. I put the cover on to go ahead and propagate the plants. So I already decided. I'm gonna go ahead and put some variegated baby bunny bellies and this one and then these two are gonna be the same plant. The reason why they're going into the same, like separate but like same plant. Later on, I'm gonna repot them together. I, I don't have any other planter like I can go ahead and reuse. And in here, we're gonna go ahead and put the Twister lipstick plant. It's blooming, but I don't think she'll mind. I actually do not want the flowers. <laughs> Y'all know me, I prefer not to have flowers. I just want more foliage, but as a plant, usually when the plant's doing really, really good or it means that it's stressing out. I believe Drancinas and snake plants bloom when they're stressed out, but I think lipstick plants bloom when it's in season and when it's happy. Also, I think a Hoya, but I also, I think, I don't know. I honestly truly don't know. Cause I, I, I always thought plants bloom when they're happy, but I just read, read. I just heard on uh, TikTok that Hoyas bloom when they get stressed out. So I'm not really sure about that. I'm not, I'm not a Hoya expert, but let's go ahead and propagate. I think it's like the almost the same container. This is a mother plant. Actually, the mother plant is in the ceiling in the living room. Oh, she's dripping water. I also got my scissors, napkins, and I believe I did bought my spray bottle. I did not. I'm going to go ahead and get it later on. My rubbing alcohol spray, so I can go ahead and disinfect each time I go to a different plant. So I'm not, you know, transferring stuff. But this is some that I propagated and they look amazing. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is chop it up again because, well not again, I'm gonna go ahead and chop her up so it, it can become more fuller and beautiful as well I can get more cuttings because I want more of these. This is just so, so beautiful. The middle plant is not looking so good. She's actually in the living room, like I said, in the ceiling. This will become a mother because I'm gonna go ahead and chop her up. Not that much special. I don't go leaf by leaf. I just get cuttings. I mean, like anything that's long. And I try to give a gap of like an inch or two inches and then I just shove it in the soil. And what's gonna happen, this plant propagates really, really beautifully. She would go ahead and just get more fuller, which is just stunning because it's just gonna make it more um, luscious and it's gonna have more vines when she is starting to trail. I will upgrade this uh, plant. Well, there's multiple plants in it, but I will go ahead and upgrade this one to a bigger planter and I wanna hang it Maybe outside, I'm not quite sure, but I do want some outside. I do want some in the ceilings in the living room. As well, I do want to have some here in the fancy shelves because it's just so beautiful. It's such a beautiful plant. So this is all I have. Would like to get another one because that's, okay, I think I'm a, well, a little bit more. It don't hurt. Okay, that's good. Well, over here too. <laughs> okay, gonna put it to the side. We have this one. So this is a little bit long. So I'm gonna cut it in half. It's gonna be a little bit too short, but she'll be fine. Just take off a leaf without breaking it. And I'm gonna pat this dry. 
I'm gonna just place this raw cutting straight into soil because these roots so easily and they're just awesome. And I'm gonna make sure the soil is nice and moist because it needs to drink up water and it does not have roots, you know, to pick that up efficiently. So we have to make sure she's nice and moist, not wet, we don't want it to rub, but just moist so it can develop beautiful roots. I believe I ended up propagating this one two weeks ago. Or three. Yeah, I think it was two weeks ago or three weeks ago. Pretty fast. <laughs> and now I'm getting more cuttings out of it. She's already putting out, as y'all saw, lots of new leaves, which is awesome. I just really, really love this plant a lot. I have not seen it in the big box stories. I'm guessing it's not in season yet. But if you do ever see this beautiful var variegated baby bunny bellies, <laughs> definitely snatch one up i do want to get the, the other one unless one of the vines revert then i can just go ahead and reuse that but i would love to get a the non-barricaded one that one's beautiful too it's just the same thing just not barricaded but i love these a lot i really really do i highly recommend it. and it's a try to i'm pretty sure it's try i'm pretty sure it's try to i'll try to that i want that's on my wish list right now but i'm pretty sure you can get it later on Sometimes it's too tough in there. So what I like to do, I don't think I have one. I gotta check in the cajon. Ow. I like to get like a little pen. Anything that I can stab with soil to make a little hole. That's not gonna work out. This is fine. It's kind of big. Oh, my bad. <laughs> a little bit chaotic right now. I'm gonna do a little hole. I'm just gonna place this cutting in there. And then tuck it in. This is such an easy plant to propagate, y'all. Such an easy plant. But I uh Tris I really really want to my collection is the pink pad pantern Triscantii. It's pink and white and kind of purplish, but it's more pink than anything, and it is beautiful. It is stunning. I love, 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 love how it looks. And it has it has really, really mini leaves, like really, really tiny leaves. So it's such a beautiful plant. That is one that I would like to have. This thing is a little bit too thick, but I don't have like a pencil. That'd be like a really, really good. See like, oh, I'm gonna just place it down, but this leaf can be removed. A little twist because I was yanking it, but I almost broke off the, the stem because they're just kind of delicate. See, it's getting nice and full. And yay, I have another one. Well, hopefully it'll, I'm pretty sure it will root. Just gotta leave it on a grow light and keep it nice and moist and she will develop roots. This one also roots easily. I actually had it in um, the, that one. Well, she's a mother plant now. I had it in water and she was developing leaves. Like, I mean, roots. My bad, y'all. I just finished filming an hour a video and editing it as well. And then I have to do this one, which I don't, I sound like I'm complaining, but I really, really do love creating content now, especially more than ever. I, since the springtime is coming up, I don't know what it is, or like, I'm just really excited for the days to get longer. These plants are gonna go even crazier. <laughs> They're gonna grow even more. They have been growing. A lot of my plants don't go dormant. Usually they don't because they're on grow lights and I have my, my grow lights on schedule. That is it for this one. I'm just gonna dispose of these leaves. It's sad, but it's okay, y'all. It's okay, I have a little trash can over here. <laughs> and that's it. That's literally, this is, this one looked just like this and you can see lots of new leaves coming in Ooh, spilling so now we're done with that the next one we're gonna go ahead and do is the twister plant and i'm gonna go ahead and pull that one up i've never really propagated a, a lipstick plant before so this will be my first time doing it here's another plant she has so many leaves over here sprouting I kind of want to use these since these are really, really active and they're nice and firm. I think I might use these. I don't want to, but I think I might. I think I might. It will get bushy, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. I'm gonna experiment. Just like that. I Googled how to propagate lipstick plants and it's the same thing from what I saw as how I was doing my um Freddy Skinty eye. You just get cuttings like that. <laughs> the way I just threw the floor. Just little cuttings like that and you shove it in soil oh i got the whole vine or in a in a, in a in a medium it could be so i'm trying to focus uh, it was kind of tight in there they don't want to cut my fingers mm. 
and you place it in your medium. So it could be soilless pica moss or water. Majority of the, the article that I was reading is usually in soil. You want to make sure that the environment is like, you know, pleasing for a cutting, which is like warm and humid and lots of bright and direct light so they can have all that energy to go ahead and produce roots. It's starting to sprout even on the vines. This plant is so happy. I'm letting it get more light on top. Before I didn't, it had like little, these sprouts were so tiny and then she bloomed. I hanged it in the ceiling and it was kind of slowing down and it was dropping the flowers, which I'll show you in a bit. But I placed it back in the grow light where it's getting light on top and now she's just bouncing back. So really, really happy. You can kind of see the flowers right there. I hope you can. Just beautiful. Such a beautiful plant. I love this one so much. And as well, it's even more of my favorites because it just does beautifully. It grows so nicely inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a cutting, push down these leaves. It should be pretty easy, right? Yeah, so that'll do it. And stick that in the soil. From what I read a while back, the reason why you wanna take off the leaves, I always thought soil doesn't rot, which it could be valid too. But it's also because like I said, the plant is, doesn't have a root system to pick up water. So it's gonna have all these leaves needing water and also nutrients and it really should be going to these leaves it should be going to producing roots and the plant will obviously do its best to sustain these leaves and grow roots but it'll work even harder so if you just take off majority of the leaves and just leave a few on top it gives it enough to photosynthesize as well create roots like i said it's my first time propagating but pretty sure it's like this. I'm pretty sure it's pretty easy. I've seen lots of people placing it in water. I don't usually like propagating water. It's fun and I, I do, but when I want plants to get established, I really don't. <laughs> Unless I know it's a really, really easy plant, like a golden potos, it's easy. The reason why is because whenever I propagate in water and I transfer it to soil, the plant goes to shock. Those roots become water roots and what ends up happening it will develop roots in the soil, but it'll take longer. Because the roots that it has, they're water roots. Then water, water roots. They're not, you know, soil roots. They're different. So, yeah. Just taking these off. And that's basically, it does have a smell. It smells like a leaf. I remember, which one is it? I think it's Drancinas. Oh my God. Whenever I, cut a drancina it releases a very strong spicy odor like kind of alerting a little bit like poisonous kind of smell <laughs> but yeah and once it you know roots and i won't really know um in a week no maybe in two weeks i might pull one or see if there's like a resistance right and if there is that means it already developed roots i don't want to yank all of it out because i don't want to break or damage any of those delicate roots that it just produced but once it gets established hopefully it does i will put it in one plant or both of these and make another hanging basket or maybe separate depends on my on my on my mood I might just make one for the shelf and then place the other one outside. Like I said, I really want to place um, plants outside. It's just such a vibe. I really, really loved drinking my iced coffee in the balcony, listening to the birds. Sometimes the cars and <laughs> people yelling, but the, the good memories, they stay with me. And last year, it was such a chaotic year for me. 2023 was crazy for me. I mean, Every year it's crazy for a lot of us, but for some reason, 2023 was just crazier. Like, it was just insane, insane. <laughs> and I remember just going to the balcony and just getting some fresh air. And it helped me a lot. So I really, really missed that. And I wanna mimic that environment once again, but I don't have that many plants, right? Cause I got rid of a lot of them, so. The goal is to propagate because I know how to propagate plants. I have plants to propagate and I have plants that I really, really do love and I can make more. I do remember back then, I just did not like having a lot of duplicates. It was kind of like stressful 
but I thought about that. I would either merge it with the, um, with other ones or make like arrangements like how I did with my corn plants and the limelight Drancina and the some Severios all in one plant. It was beautiful. It's still there in the living room. It's doing amazing. Or I might just gift them away. It's always still nice to give plants away. I do understand that and accept and I am aware that there are some plants that I might propagate, let them get beautiful and big and just to be gifted away. And I think that's okay because I just love propagating. And if you just hoard everything, um, which is fine, but you're gonna, I would get overwhelmed and I would run out of space. People say there's no such thing, but which is true. You can put plants anywhere, but you also gotta consider the light bill and time. I, if you want your plants to thrive, which I want my plants to thrive, I wanna make sure that all my plants get enough good quality light if it's from the windows or from my grow lights. And there's only so much of that that I have. I wish I had like a greenhouse or a lot of us do, right? Or other stuff, but I don't. I live in an apartment setting, so I gotta be considerate that I can't have too many plants. I can have a lot of plants, but not the way that I wish I, I could. Hope that makes sense. But we already got four plants done already. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start chopping and placing them in sphagnum moss. I have one set ready over here. It's already nice and moist and ready for us. So we are first gonna go ahead and propagate this one. Thank you so much for the person that gave me the actual plant ID for this one. It's a lipstick plant and it's a uh, lipstick pagoda. Hope I pronounced it correctly. It's a lipstick pagoda and it's beautiful. I just got it and I, I recently repotted it to this beautiful planter which my boyfriend gifted to me. It's beautiful. And I want to propagate it. I want it to get more bushy. And I feel when you cut it, it produces side shoots, which I want because I want it to get more fuller. If not, then I'll put the babies in here. I'll figure it out. But I do want to go ahead and chop it and make another one. I did saw how these are propagated. So I might do it by sets, which I'll show you in a bit. Kind of risque, but we're gonna experiment. I ain't cutting a lot. I really want it to get full, but not too much though. But just enough to make like a nice six inch basket. Yeah, see, they, they trimmed it over here and it ended up splitting. So that's what I hope that's what's gonna happen with this one. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, now we're done. She looks bald, but she will be placed in the, in the grill lights and get some really, really good quality lights. When I said set, so this one's already a set is there's like leaves, right? Like the string of hearts. There'll be like sets over here and sets over here. There's two. So I'm gonna cut it and hopefully roots will develop behind the leaves, like by the node. So I'm gonna do that with the rest. And since I'm doing this and kinda wanna play it safe, I'm gonna place this in sphagnum moss. I wanna make sure that it's in a really, really good quality. Not quality, but good environments to propagate. The reason why this works so much is because it's so moist in there. This bag of mouse is very loose and it carries water. And like I said, a lot of these, um, a lot of these cuttings don't have roots to take in water. They need water. So this bag of moss and this very humid environment is going to allow the plant to get water from its leaves and from it's gonna get it's gonna get water it's gonna get water and i'm just shoving them in there i'm gonna really really see how this happens i want to make sure one thing that i learned about property and spider mouse i used to place things in there and that's it which would work but i noticed i get better success when i make sure it sounds pretty obvious but i wasn't thinking like that when i really make sure the node has contact to the spider moss it's like really nicely tucked in and these are really easy if this property gets easily oh my goodness i just saw the flowers on these they do look beautiful not as beautiful as a, as a twister. That was my favorite. But I do, I, I don't have it for the the flowers. The lipstick plant, this one, I need to find the actual name. The one we just did. I actually love the flower. I really, really do. It's beautiful, it's red, it's very bright. But this one, I like it for its foliage. This is a good one. It has, it's just so pretty. You see that, like the leaves and the back is pretty cool too. So. I like it, I like it, I like it. I kind of like the smell of spider moss. I'm weird, I know. Kind of smells like when it rains outside. Oh, how much I miss rainy days. I think we're also getting into the rainy weather. It rains on spring, right? It does. I think it depends where you live, but. 
That's it. That's literally it. Look at that. It's <laughs> a little corner. So that's enough to make a six inch pop of these roots. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and probably get my mikeins. Look at that. It's currently, currently in this cute planter. I like it a lot. This one's also really easy to propagate and it does get bushy as you chop it, which I want this mikeins to get because mikeins can get a little bit leggy and ugly <laughs> for me. So that's it, that's all I'm getting. This is gonna stay. I'm gonna let it grow and hopefully it produces more shoots. We'll be here, we're gonna go by, by nodes. So like, oh, that's a beautiful leaf. Just like that, a leaf. Behind it is like where it's gonna develop the roots, a node. I'm gonna shove it right in there. Like I said, you, well, I don't know if I told you, but I've been filming all the time, so I don't really know which video that I set it on, if I already said it yet, but I usually have success, well, not success, but I usually start seeing results within a week when it propagates in sphagnum moss. So I'll give you guys updates, I, you know, as long with everything else on how they are doing because it's always fun seeing the roots. I also, if you have not followed me yet on Facebook or Instagram, girls, the same content. Um, I share it across. I also like to give y'all daily updates on Instagram stories and Facebook stories. It's just a lot easier and it's more raw and it's just easier for me. <laughs> so I kind of miss when YouTube used to offer that, but I guess not a lot of people were watching it as well, like using it. Uh, YouTube stories, they had stories back then, but not no more. I was kind of concerned this was not gonna fit all in one container, but surprisingly it is. Sorry, I'm like staying quiet, it's just, I kind of start like meditating, I don't really meditate, I don't know meditating, but this is really therapeutic to me, propagating. I like it a lot. The idea that you're gonna make more plants for free and just producing individual plants is crazy to me. It so surprises me. It's like, wow, that's really, really cool. So those are the micans and the lipstick pagoda. <laughs> I really hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. All right, next up, we have two more plants, you guys. Next up is going to be the Monstera Salty Picana. Now this one does have a lot of nodes and I do have half space in here with the silver blue cuttings. And also if I really need more space, I have my other container which has the Skindopsis Silver Hero with some limelight philodendrons. I have my Magilla one which we did saw, I don't know, why, there is um, white fuzzy roots but there is also mealybugs. So I might do it on camera or off camera. I was thinking of either getting like a rubbing uh, Q-tip and just dabbing everything, leaf by leaf, everything. I'm killing the mealybug on contact or just taking out the cuttings, rinsing them really, really good on the, the sink, on the tub, and then placing it on soil because there, there's already like an inch, that's an inch, right? <laughs> there's already an inch of roots. Usually an inch is what I think is good, but I think it's best for it to have like two inches or I even heard that three inches is good too, but. I think two inches of roots per rooted cuttings is good enough to transfer to soil or whatever your propagation medium is. But I'm gonna give it more time. Doesn't seem like the mealybugs are going crazy, but I, I will need to handle that pretty soon and figure it out. But we're gonna chop this one because it's a really, really cool plant. I used to kill it very easily. I'm also doing the same method as I did with the Ah, sorry. With the micans, we're gonna do it by, by nodes. And this will get more bushy, more fuller, which is always nice. And I do wanna have some outside. One thing that I learned about this plant, it does not like to dry out. It gets, oof, it just doesn't. So I have to make sure that it doesn't dry out. I also read that, or heard from y'all, that it's a really easy, or a plant that gets prone to, I don't even disinfect my scissors. <laughs> I have the napkin, all of that, but uh, it's okay. That it's pretty prone to spider mites. So that's a little bit of a, a fear. I kind of see a little bit, maybe I'm just paranoid or delusional 
but I feel like I do see some some fuzziness. Like if medibugs are wanting to jump in. So what I might do, and I don't have my spray bottle no more. Like my mask is spray, bo spray bottle for neem oil. Neem oil, it's very, very good as a preventative and it shines the plants. I got used to the smell. I'm kind of most blend to it at this point because it's just, it's so strong, it literally burned my nostrils. But I want to get that bottle again down the line and spray my new plants with neem oil as a preventative because what it does is when um, any of these soft bodies, insects, bugs, my bad, jump into a plant, a new plant, and they bite it, the neem oil clogs their throat and they cannot eat, which they die out of hunger. Usually, that's how it works. But I have neem oil. I actually have a new bottle. But I don't have the, 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 the spray bottle, because you need a spray bottle. See, it was cut, and then it produced, it's producing a new leaf. It's not splitting, though. So, it's kind of a shocker. Everybody has, why am I smacking it? I'm sorry, y'all. I'm, I'm being gentle, I, it just uh, looks like I'm being aggressive, but see? New shoots, new shoots. Just, just, just like the mandula, I would cut it. It would not do the split where I cut it from, but every leaf will produce, uh, produce a new shoe. I think that, that was happening every day. There's always something going on, but, <laughs> uh, it makes the plant more bushy, so that's really, really fun. I will rinse these roots because... Roots. Wow. I will rinse these cuttings really, really good. And then also spray them with rubbing alcohol because I do not want to transfer melly bugs with those cuttings. That would really, really be terrible. So... Sometimes it's too long, the sticks are just trimming a little bit because they don't need to be that long. I got this one from Walmart. I think it was for 19 something, 1984. Really, really good deal. This is a fun plant. I didn't really know this was like a really trendy plant. Not quite sure why, I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, I'm a golden photos lover, so I can't always see what other people see, but this one, like a lot of people want this plant so bad, badly, like badly, and they used to be expensive. Like I think they used to sell these for like $40 for like a four, uh, four inch planter. That's kind of crazy, that's kind of crazy. But the plant prices are dropping, which is pretty cool. I love it a lot because those prices were crazy during COVID time. And even last year, it was already past COVID, but the prices were still there because there was a high demand. And people want a lot of plants as well. The demand fell, but there was still like, you know, competitors. Or, I don't even know. This is bad. I'm not going to use that. I have so many cuttings of Mostella Sosipicana and just throw it. I, it hurts me too because I used to watch other people doing plant toys. And they had a really, really cool plant, and they would throw away the wet sticks. It's like, well, this would be considered wet sticks if you propagate it. And I'm like, no, give it to me. <laughs> like, let me get that cool plant within a wet stick. What's well, a pretty leaf? I get it, but shipping cuttings, you guys, is crazy. I actually was doing it back then. I had like a 60% success. The 40, other 40% was like, oh my goodness. But look at this leaf. Beautiful. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse these one by one. Really, really good at some high pressure water, not to rip the leaves, but enough to clean them through. And then I don't think I have to spray when we all caught them, but that'll be fine. And yeah, so I'll be back. I think I might take you guys along. <laughs>
Alrighty, we are back. And that was pretty dramatic, <laughs> the way that I did all of it. My knees were hurting. And yes, I'm wearing PJs. My boyfriend got them for me and they're super duper comfy. <laughs> I like, I had a little baby Yoda face. It was just super duper cute when I was watching it on Star Wars, on the Disney. I'm not a big Star Wars fan. I mean, I'm not really, honestly, but it was so cute when I was watching it with a Mandalorian, I believe. Like, super, super cute. So, I had to. And I loved it. And then my boyfriend was getting me, like, a lot of Baby Yoda stuff. So, <laughs> Baby Yoda's cute, y'all. He is he's so cute. Alrighty. I think I did. That was crazy. I don't know why I'm so dramatic, but... <laughs> Hopefully this helps a little bit and I will be checking out these day daily and hopefully we don't have mamelies. I'll keep y'all posted. Those money bugs, man. I, I honestly do wish I had like predatory mites. Is that, that's what they call it, right? Like a uh, pest control, but like with other pests, beneficial insects, that's, that's the actual term. That would be really, really nice to have, but I don't know how I feel having those around. I know there are some that are super duper tiny, you can hardly see them. And then like also like they would just die off when they already, you know, handled all of those mealybugs because that's their food source. So if there's no mealybugs, they just die. Maybe down the line when I have like a lot of plants, I'll look into that. Right now I live in apartments. If I had a rental home, I feel a little bit safer compared to an apartment because uh, there's people in the building, right? I don't want to like, you know. And I think I've been here for like four years. No, three years, my bad, three years. I'm pretty sure some people know that I'm like the plant person. Like, I remember like the balcony always being crazy. And there was actually some people, like the neighbors, they would be like, is that you in the balcony? And I was like, yeah, those are my plans. <laughs> so, and they see a bug, they're gonna think like, oh, it's that plant guy from above or from the side, I don't know. So, but if I had a rental home, it's just us, my cousin and my boyfriend. And I actually asked them before and I told them like, oh yeah, we don't mind. As long as it doesn't bother them, like, bite them or something like that which i don't think I'll, there's some that don't do that but down the line down the line ahorita i'll just try to be mother nature and do it myself which as you can see i'm bad at it because i'm struggling but <laughs> those smelly bugs but i'd rather have many bugs than anything i know some people hate many bugs and they'd rather have like spider mites or scale but i actually rather have many bugs than scale or spider mites because i don't like spiders and just the thought of it i know they're not spiders but I don't like the name and if I had a microscope I would be terrified like absolutely terrified and I would burn the plant I don't like spiders whatsoever y'all I'm so sorry I just I can't it's my biggest fear I had like trauma when I was little and I don't play with them no more they're cute when they're like 20 feet away but yeah no, I, I, I don't like spiders that night was cutting the yard it's like so late at night but I just can't do spiders. And then scale, I just don't like them. Like I cannot just spray rubbing alcohol on them. And they would thought like, you actually have to be really, really on, on it. Like actually like physically with them. And I hate that. With Melly Bugs, I just get a rubbing alcohol spray bottle and I spray it. it of course it's diluted. You don't want it to be hundred percent cause it would actually damage the plant. I remember one time I saw something on the plant. Like I thought it was eggs. I, I dumped the whole bottle and the plant to kill it. And it was fuzzy, or I don't know, I think I did it. I did something and it killed the plants. As a matter of fact, it was actually the variegated holly philodendron that I was trying to uh, save. And good thing I ended up taking some cuttings before I waited, because the next day I woke up and it looked pretty bad. Like the, 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 the leaves that were coming from the plant, like in the beginning, like in the start, they were already going downhill. The ones that looked okay were the ones that were already like at the end of the vine. So those are the ones that I ended up cutting to save it. Good thing I did because I would have never had a, I would have not had one anymore. The variegated holly philodendron. And the one that we're gonna probably get right now is from Cuttings. And she is very, very, very big. So I'll show you that later on. It's just really starting to fill in. I'm scratchy. <laughs> okay. A lot of these cuttings already have roots. I mean, like sprouts. They have air roots too. So I'm guessing where they were at before was very humid because, because I just, like I said, I just got this plant on Walmart not long ago. I think it was like a couple, like five days ago. So, or three days ago, I think so. I'm already propagating it. 
I just want to have another one because this plant I have killed before and I don't want to kill it. And if I do, I got to back up. Because I know this, I can just get one in Walmart again or Lowe's if I see one. But I can just probably get one, right? So, and I like to call it as plant insurance. You want to have, you want to have some plant insurance. It's a beautiful plant. You look at that. Instead of so it's kind of, it looks like a super blue, but it's not. I love my seafood blue. I actually do have some cuttings, which we will place some irrigated holly plant cuttings in there. I'm not rinsing those because those look pretty good. The only one that I saw was this one. Like I said, I just got it. And I got it from Walmart. I don't hardly ever have any pest problems with like Walmart plants, but recently my local Walmart has been having mealybugs. I've been seeing some mealybugs and their succulents and their house plants. I'm just like, oh, that's new. But I guess I use a napkin. This cake is full. Let's put some water in there. And I'm not gonna open it. Oops, sorry. I'm not gonna open it in a couple days. I'm gonna let those fresh cuttings heal or do something. I notice that when I don't open it, I let it sit for like three or four days and I check it, I already see a little bit of white roots, white fuzzy roots. So ex compared to like when I check it daily, multiple times, I feel like it messes with the humidity. That's what I think. All right, y'all. Next up is going to be, and lastly, the variegated heart leaf philodendron, which I'll show you the mother plant. This is the one that I was telling you that I, I killed the mother. And I, the mother that I made, the cuttings that I took from that mother, I think I left it in the greenhouse. So this one, it's just from cuttings, but it's a full established plant. Oh, if I can get it. Here she is. <laughs> she is very big. She has grown a lot, but she looks kind of funky. I don't know. She's honestly not that bad. She's looking pretty good. Some some vines, or like, well, each vine is its own cutting, are a lot more variegated than others. I'm wondering if it's the light, you know, or if some are just reverting, because this one looks just crappy, crappy. This vine. Even the new leaves look a little bit like, that's just green. This one looks like it's sick. And then this, this other vine, that's putting, oh, I ended up cutting. I don't know what happened to the cuttings to be honest, but it's putting out sprouts, which I wanna show you. So there's one right over here. There's another one over here. There's one over here. And there's one right there. And there's one right there too. They're not area roots because they're green. And they're very thick. And it looks like it's foliage. And it did cut the tip of that vine. So, pretty interesting, pretty interesting. And there's only, let's still see how many there's inside. This is only from two cuttings. This is only <laughs> from two leggy cuttings. And I chop it, chop it, chop it, and that's what made this, the back looks bad. But considering just from two cuttings, that is not bad. Because the front looks very nice and lux lux luxurious. Lush. <sighs> but she could be a little bit better. So we're going to chop her up. I don't have that much space. I only have this cake, which is where I have the super blues that I did yesterday. And that's all I have. And I think I can fit, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna chop the good vine with the good propagate, with the good variegation. Cause we want a nice variegated heart for them to run. And this one has some good ones, just like that. And that's it for this one. So, <laughs> here's the vine that I took. The one that has really, really good variegation. Genetics, I guess you can say. And the old ones look pretty good. And let's see how much we have. We have one, oops, sorry, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight cuttings. And it came from two cuttings, that's crazy. I'm gonna put them in here. I did not saw no pests. I mean, there could be some micro ones that I just cannot see. 
but I don't really see anything. Not even hiding, because sometimes they put out, you know, with the new leaves, it has a little, like, coat. And they be hiding in that, like this. This thing over here. When a new leaves, I can just take it off, but no, I'll take it off, actually. This thing over here. When a new leaf unfurls, millibugs love to hide in that. But I don't really see anything. No melees. Perfect. It makes my life a little bit easier. Gonna place these cuttings in here. I thought I had some propagating. I guess not. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Gonna place these in here. Making sure the nodes are nicely tucked in. It's kind of cold, the sphagnum moss. So I don't like that. I know this will real. I really, really, y'all. I really want to invest and get a heat mat for my plants, especially right now they're like at Walmart and Lowe's because people use it for to grow their seedlings. Those are awesome. You can get one on Amazon too, and I think I might get mine on Amazon. Those are great for like plants that love warmth, like the Bergera Mostera Peru grows really, really fast when the soil is nice. I mean, any plant does, but I noticed uh, that plant's like for sure, for sure. And I might put it on my Bergera Mostera Peru and maybe my Bergera Branch of Peperonia. Plants that I like would benefit, any plant would benefit actually. Plants that I want to do a little bit better. That's, those are the ones that will get the heat map, as well my little trays that I'm propagating in. So, I don't know if you can, I'm pretty sure there's some heat maps you can control the temperature, like medium, high, and low maybe, because since these are covered, it might heat up a little bit more, and we don't want to bake the cuttings, right? So, I'll look into it. I'll go to Amazon later on and check, and add it to my cart, and then wait like a couple weeks to buy it. <laughs> but, that is it on the variegated Hartley philodendron cuttings or heridiaceum. Heridiaceum. How fun. We propagated a lot of plants that I've been wanting to propagate for so long. And I'm actually really, really excited to watch them grow. I'm going to put these in saucers and let them sit in water and place them in really, really good grill lights. Just in a grill light and watch it develop roots hopefully and give you guys updates what happens and stuff like that i'm i think the most confident ones that i feel is this one and the most other salted pecan cuttings and the very good hot protection cuttings and spike the moss because i've done those before and they root so easily so but these lipstick plants that's new as well the lipstick pagoda pagoda that's new for me but i'll give you guys updates on what happens so thank you so much for watching guys sending positive advice to each and every single one of you guys and i'll see you in the next one bye